Just look at me, forget the camera. All right. All that fun stuff. Um, who are you? So, my name is Rob Lefferts. I'm a program manager on the SharePoint Services team. And my role on SharePoint Services is actually working uh, as part of our initiative around enterprise content management to help drive the... Is that like blogging for big companies? <laughs> no, it's actually about uh, managing information for big companies. Yeah. So, information workers is the phrase for people who go out there and create knowledge or information, and companies need a better way to handle that stuff. Where do I store it? How do I describe it? How do I keep track of versions? How do I approve it? Uh, and these days, more and more, how do I make sure I don't get sued over it? Or right. how do I keep it and get rid of it at the appropriate times? Yeah. So that's a lot of what enterprise content management is about. And we're making investments across all of that uh, in this round of office. So you'll see, uh, talking about the BDC, you'll see uh, investments around records management, stuff we're doing around workflow, working with Windows Workflow Foundation is a big push this time around, okay. uh, as well as things that we're doing at the base SharePoint platform to enhance document management and versioning and metadata to describe types of documents. Now, you said you were an Office 12 guy, right? Yes, that's right. But when I think of Office, I think of Word and Excel and PowerPoint and that's right. Outlook, right? Yeah, well, that's actually one of the things we've been uh, working on for a while now around it's not just about Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Those are great apps and we've invested over them for a number of years. But the idea is uh, to help people with the whole system around how to information workers do their jobs and how can they be more effective and how can the enterprise, the IT organization, help them. So investments on the server to go with all the investments we've made on the client in these years. Right. Now, this is probably going to play at the PDC after Steven Stanowski does his keynote, right? That's right. It, it, what, what, part of your, what part of your work is being demonstrated at the keynote? Uh, so we'll actually be showing some of the workflow capabilities inside of Sanofsky's keynote. So okay. he'll be describing, uh, I mentioned workflow is one of the big investments. There's Windows Workflow Foundation is going into the Windows platform, and that's yeah. a big part of uh, how Microsoft moves the development platform forward. Inside SharePoint, what we do is we're taking that and we're hosting it inside SharePoint. So building on that platform, really, uh, an application, a okay. solution for people who want to do workflow for people. Got it. As opposed to workflow for machines or business to business style workflow. So we've interviewed interviewed that team by the way, and, the, great. and their interview is going to come up probably the same same day your interview is coming up. Great. Um, so so that's all about the problems that people have when they try to do workflow. Like, got it. well, I need to approve documents. I need to route documents. Uh, they have complicated, messy things like they don't know who's supposed to approve the document. One of twenty people. The right person will volunteer themselves. Or it's not always set up beforehand, or as frequently happens, I need to change this workflow halfway through. This isn't the right process. Let's fix it. Let's change it. The guy who's doing it's on vacation. I fired him last week. Whatever it is, it has to be much more flexible. Uh, and then the last thing is like to be useful for people. It has to show up where they want to see it, inside Word, inside Outlook, inside SharePoint. So it's tools they're used to dealing with. Got it. The thing it sounds I, like the Office team really has thought that the, the world of work is really going through some major changes, it sounds like. I mean, I, we didn't talk about workflows 10 years ago, or we didn't even have email in most companies. <laughs> told, you know, when I started my career 13 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, how is the world of work changing? So is, how does the office team see it changing? You know, because you guys see the world in a, a diff, completely different way than I do, you know, playing with Outlook or... Sure, that, that's a pretty broad question. I guess yep. I'll, I'll give you a very uh, SharePoint specific answer to that. Okay. And then I'll talk about the ways in which I know my worldview isn't accounting for everything that's going on. So uh, one, of, one of the exciting things for me is to say people uh, do all this collaboration and we brought email to them and that was great because now they can send email back and forth. But uh, in some ways things need to be more structured in a lot of contexts. So if you want to send a document for review and you send an email off to five of the people who should review it, you don't have any help in who should do the reviewing. Uh, how do you know, how do they get comments back to you? Odds are they just, you know, do it in line and mail it back to you. And then what we normally most often see is someone with like five copies of the document spread out on their table trying to cut and paste between them. Uh, so let's help keep track of who's done the review, who's supposed to do the review. When it comes back, uh, let's remember that for audits five years down the road, did the right people sign off on this document? And all of that is about providing more structure. It's the kind of thing you can do when you put a smart collaborative server like SharePoint into the middle of a bunch of client applications. Yeah. 
that doesn't tell the whole story because there is that's a very sort of server centric view of the world. I'm a server guy, uh, <laughs> but there are a bunch of investments. It's ironic that our first uh, Office 12 interview is with you, a server right. guy. Right. <laughs> Maybe that's not so ironic. Actually. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, so there is a, a bunch of other stuff that's going on, like yeah. around Groove, where we say, ah, servers are great, but people aren't always connected to servers, or frequently they they don't want to lose track of the ad hoc peer-to-peer -peer capabilities that they've gotten used right. to, and let's actually enrich that experience as well. And so, we've made some investments about uh, collaborative apps like Outlook, synchronizing to SharePoint to take contact and calendar and issue, uh, as well as document information offline in Outlook. And we're working with the Groove guys going forward to do the same thing, to talk about how does my document library show up in Groove so when there's a team of us off at a customer site, we can actually uh, work with that information. Right. What's the biggest change that people are going to notice when they, when they sit down to Office 12? Other than the UI. We're interviewing That's UI. the first thing. We're, the UI. <laughs> That's we're interviewing the... Julie in a, a couple of hours. But, I, I mean, from your point of view, because you're the server guy, you're the SharePoint guy, what are they going to notice about the server? What's changed on the server? What What are we going to see from that standpoint? Well, there's going to be a couple of things. So, because we already have SharePoint today, right? We can right. already drop Word documents in there and make lists that, that sort of look like a spreadsheet, and we can already make something that looks sort of like a blog or a website, and we can add it. Sure. So how how is it going to be different in the in the Office 12 world? Well, let me carve that up into a bunch of different buckets. So the okay. first thing is that there are going to be some simple pieces of functionality where we listen to our customers. And they said, uh, it's really a pain in the neck that I have to call IT when I delete something. And so we said, great, here's the recycle bin. And I think a lot of people will just get a lot of bang for the buck out of we did that iteration and listen to our customers. Yeah. Um, the second thing is that SharePoint in particular is going to do a lot more uh, reaching out to the client environment. So I mentioned the synchronization with Outlook. It'll be easier for people to say, oh, I want to take my documents with me on the plane, and I want to work on those while I'm offline. Uh, and similarly, workflow is going to just appear in the places do their, people do their work today. So I open up Word, and there'll be a little bar at the top uh, telling me that this document is currently awaiting my approval. And I can just click on it, form comes up, I can perform the action right there within Word. Uh, and the interesting thing is it's actually the same experience. If I did that from within Word, I'd see the same approval form as if I went to the website and clicked on the form there. It's actually a server render view of the same info path form. So you would see it in the application itself? And I live in Outlook, for instance. Yeah. I don't even open up Word unless somebody sends me a document. Would it, the same notification come in Outlook saying, hey... You've got a task you know, awaiting your behavior. Bill Gates is waiting for an approval on this document, da 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 Click here to approve the document. Okay. Yep. And I would see it on whether I open the document up from Word or whether I open it. Wow. That's, yeah. So that's some of the integration of the server side stuff. Yeah, workflow see. in particular is an interesting area where I'd say uh, very rarely does an actual end user walk up to their computer and say, I'd like to do some workflow today. Like, they, just don't, <laughs> <laughs> they just don't form that goal. No. They have a bunch of jobs that get thrown at them and they want to do those jobs in all the places that are natural. So that's a lot of the investments that we've made around the Windows Workflow platform right. uh, on the Office side is about making sure that that experience does show up wherever people want to see it. Now, what if I worked in a small office with two guys and I don't have a SharePoint server there? What, uh, I wouldn't get that kind of functionality. That's right. We're, okay. So uh, we still have capabilities like Send for Review, but the model that I just described is uh, what we call star topology. So the workflow, the state of the machine is hosted on the server. And the clients talk to the server in order to understand where, is, where am I in this business process. Okay. Uh, and so I have that, to have and, the, uh, the Office 12 version of SharePoint, right? Yeah. If okay. you don't have the Office 12, so Windows SharePoint Services V3. Okay. Uh, and uh, <laughs> That's always fun figuring out how Microsoft yeah, names things. <laughs> or yep. Office Server 12, yep. uh, those have the, the server-side workflow capabilities that you need. Got it. Uh, and you can also take advantage of that if you don't have the client. So if you don't have the latest version of the Office client, then you won't get those great integrated forms I just described. You'll go to the web page and you'll execute the action there. Okay. Let's say I work at a, I don't know, a bank with 100 people. And my, my IT manager goes, hey, you just got Office 12. And you just got this new Office 12 server, right? What's, what, is it gonna, what am I going to have to do to learn how to 
that there is this new workflow thing and how to use it. Is it just going to be a new option when I send a, an email around? Is that how I'm going to start learning about it? Or Well, what's going to happen is the uh, this is going to get kicked off by someone who is uh, managing the site on the server. And they're going to say, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's an IT person. It could be somebody more like a business person whose part-time job is running the team site. And they don't run NT servers, they don't do backups, they don't build web pages, but they're the people in charge of saying, uh, what we really need is a place for all of our documents and a place to track our issues, and let's create those lists right. out of the box. And SharePoint makes it really easy to do that today. Um, tomorrow, the, that person, that site administrator, will go into the document library and say, we need a standard way to review our documents. And there'll be a button to click Add Workflow, pick the options they want, who should do the approval, when should the due date be, uh, and that will then make all of the workflow options show up for end users in all the places. So they'll see it, they'll a way to start workflow in the website and a way to start workflow from the office client okay. as well. Yesterday I was on a plane between San Francisco and Seattle, and I had two hours, right? I can imagine working somewhere and sure. wanting to work on some of these documents that need all this approval because it's, you know, maybe it's a legal contract or something that I need to spend an hour or two reading. Can I work offline that, in a plane and, and actually approve these things as well and then does it resync up? There are a lot of things you can do offline. Okay. Uh, you can work on the document. So I mentioned you can take them offline in Outlook, and then you can say, hey, I need to edit this document. And then when you get back on, you can open up Word and, and synchronize your changes back to the server. Um, approval is not one of the things you can do all offline. Okay. And I mentioned earlier the star topology. You've got to talk to the server in order to do the approval. Okay. Um, largely, uh, this is an area we're very interested in. But there are a lot of additional constraints. If you've designed a custom workflow with multiple people operating and you need to make sure that the state of the machine is current before you let the user take an action, that's what we do, is we make sure you're talking to the current state of truth. Oh, wow. So I can't take a workflow document offline and work on You can, can take the document it? offline, and you can work on it. Okay. And you can make all of your comments for review. But what you can't do is you can't push the button that says, I have now completed this task for approval. You uh -huh. have to connect back to the server to say, I'm completing the task for okay. approval. Okay. And then it will sync up the document first and let That's me see right. everybody else's change. Then I have to go through and actually make sure. And actually push the button that says. Does it show me my changes I made on the plane? It doesn't get rid of those, right? Well, actually, it's interesting. Uh, if you have done offline edits, we're taking advantage of some of the cool new functionality in Word for doing version comparison. Uh -huh. uh, so it'll show you in this little three pane, here's the new thing, here's the old thing, here's your changes. Uh, and you can then walk through and pick out the ones that you want to have. Wow. We've also taken advantage of that for regular old version compare. So if I'm in SharePoint and I've got a library that's keeping track of versions, if I just want to see, uh, you checked in a new version. My buddy checked in a new version of the document. I want to know what he did. I can just click the version compare button, and it'll bring it up in the same nice new three-pane view. OK. Are you guys doing anything with RSS in terms of letting me watch people as they publish things and subscribe to them in my RSS aggregator. Yeah, we're actually doing a bunch inside SharePoint that's uh, related to some of the new web collabby kinds of experiences. So we're uh, enabling RSS feeds off of every list in SharePoint so that I can include a document library or an issues list and I can just get that in, in standard RSS. Uh, we're also producing site templates for blogs, okay. um, which is a fairly common scenario we've heard queries from a lot of enterprise customers asking, well, how does this blogging technology integrate with the way my enterprise warrant runs, and how does it help people share information inside the company? Yeah. Uh, and so we're building site templates to help with blogs and wikis. So well. do my blogs, can they have comments, or can they have things like trackbacks or any, any of that stuff, or, or is it just reverse chronological, you know? I don't remember of, the details, sorry. Okay. Not my future. No, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> who is the guy? I'll find him. Jackie, right down the hall. Jackie. Or, or Mike, who walked by. We right. can go hunt them down. Oh, let's go hunt them down. <laughs> so that's interesting to me. But um, what else is cool? What else do we need to know about uh, Office 12 Server? Uh, so well, one of the cool things, so I'm, I mentioned broadly yeah. document management, records management, workflow. Um, but that only speaks to this en ECM, enterprise content management space on the server. There's actually... Outside of that, a huge amount of investment being, being done across uh, search, yep. across the next wave of the collab experience. So I mentioned some of the email integration stuff, but it extends to having better discussion boards, having things like blogs and wikis. Uh, 
there are great investments around both InfoPath and Excel to have rich server-side capabilities. So the ability to render InfoPath forms on the server, if I don't have a client, I can just go to the web page and get that same experience as an end user going to fill out a form. Uh, yeah, <laughs> as well as with now, this. that's Okay, we've seen this kind of functionality in, in Exchange, right? Exchange yeah, Outlook, it's actually where, not a bad model for it. Where you. if I have Outlook loaded, I can see my email in Outlook, and it has a richer That's experience. Right. But if I'm at a library and I don't have Outlook on that computer, I can just hit the web page and see my email still. That's so right. is it still is it like that? It, it's a lot like that. So where you get the info, it's it's not about the design time experience for InfoPath, which okay. is still a rich you know client side experience about. When I deploy a form and I have you know 30,000 people at my company that need to go fill it out, I don't need to make sure they all have InfoPath installed anymore. Okay. They can go view the original. Now this stuff, does that work on any browser like uh, Outlook and Exchange do, or do you need Internet Explorer? I believe they are providing support for IE as well as Firefox, uh, Netscape style explorers. Okay. You should double check that with them. Okay, I will. Um, but uh, we're still not done. And there's more. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to hear this all week long because I'm interviewing several people in the Office 12 team this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, spending some time, um, I don't know if you can get it from Kurt or from Jeff Teeper to talk to people about the Office server investments um, okay. because there is a bunch of stuff about line of business integration, business intelligence integration, the next round of investments on portals. So providing a great sort of people-to-people uh, -people experience inside of a big company and helping build up communities of people interested in similar topics. Um, we saw the first round of this in Portal last time with okay. integration with AD and the profile database and with the My Site. They're taking that to the next step. Um, and one of the big ones, actually more related to enterprise content management, is about content management server, okay. which in the last release was a whole separate technology stack. Yeah. Uh, and in this release is becoming deeply integrated with the SharePoint products and technologies. So they're essentially rebuilding that those capabilities on top of SharePoint. Got it. And that's what you've been talking about to me today? Well, no, I've, so I've been talking very specifically about document management, records management, workflow. But the point is all of that stuff applies to uh -huh. everything that you get out of content management servers. So I can go and I can create expiration policies for compliance with, you know, DOD 5015.2 or Sarbanes-Oxley or name your favorite regulation, all that stuff will apply to the web content that I'm publishing with Content Management Server. Wow. So think of, if you think of Content Management Server, and I'm not exactly the Content Management Server guy, but if you think of it as a high level of saying, we've got um, staging and publication of content from a staging zone, test zone, out to a production web zone, along with templatized uh, entry and presentation of content, so separating the presentation from the content, those capabilities are now delivered on top of SharePoint. And so all of the portal stuff and all of the core Windows SharePoint services stuff, uh, they get to take advantage of that and then deliver this great internet, internet website experience. Got it. Oh. <laughs> a lot of stuff yeah. going on in the Server 12 team. Um, we don't have to cover it all today. Because <laughs> <Sure. laughs> this is a little ways from release. Yeah, in, yeah. In a few well, minutes. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if the marketing guys have come by and given the official timeline. Not yet. <laughs> but uh, it's on launch end of next year. Okay. Uh, and w we are moving into our first technical beta, and we'll doing, be doing public beta 2 next year. Okay. Very cool. So, so it's we not certainly that have, far away. No, <laughs> but, uh, we can every month we'll see another piece of Office 12. I'm sure this is it. This week is all about giving you a, a big picture view of what right. is going on so that you can dive in on a specific technology that interests you. You know, like I'm the RSS guy, so I'm looking for RSS everywhere. Yeah, yeah I think the RSS stuff is very cool. Right. And uh, I'm going to forget the ac acronym. It actually supports two different server feed styles, RSS right. and Atom. Atom, yeah. Right. Very cool. Um, what else do we need to know about your, your world, what you do? <laughs> What you're doing right now, you're doing some d demos for uh, PDC, right? Right, building up uh, actually a couple of interesting demos. Um, <clears throat> one of them is what we call the, uh, it's a building an end-to-end -end document solution. So I'm actually building up a demo that mimics if I were at a company today and I needed to build a solution for my company for handling vendor contracts. They would submit them to the legal department and they go through some business process and review and then they get turned around and signed by the owner. Uh, how could we automate that process and really build uh, an out-of-the-box solution 
for it. Yeah. We won't ship that, but that's the kind of thing you can easily build, and that has a lot of workflow components. Okay. Uh, the second one is actually about records management, which is to say a lot of companies are coming under this increased scrutiny about how they manage their information and how they're confident that it's not leaking, that it's not getting deleted, uh, that it is getting deleted when it should. Uh, and so we're actually building a bunch of out-of-the-box capabilities to assist with that. Uh, and it also has a bunch of hooks for places to extend. So yeah. if you set an expiration policy for a class of documents like legal contracts, uh, and you say legal contracts should live for seven years, uh, what happens then? Do they automatically just get expunged from the system? It, it turns out that very few companies want that kind of mindless auto-delete. Yeah. What they really want is to have a person go review them. So there's uh, hooks there to add new custom-built workflows that actually hold the review process for what to happen to documents after they expire. Wow. Uh, you can also build any kind of custom policy you want. So if you want to have uh, screeners that look for hot phrases, suppose you change the name of your company, and it's no longer in corporate policy to say we're company FUBAR, we're now a new snazzy company, uh, you can build policies that actually enforce that all the documents go through that right correction of what is the name of our company. It sounds like you spend a lot of time talking cu to customers, right? Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I'll stop. No, I, I think that's interesting work, because that's how you guys find new features and new ideas and how how to respond to what the real world needs are out there, right? Yeah, you know, actually. Starbucks Oxley, for instance, didn't exist five years ago, right? Right. So the, the feature set that I'm describing is something that we're, you know, unleashing with our launch and release next year, but it is something that we've been building for a couple years, but it's something we've been planning for longer than that. Yeah. Uh, and our planning exercise for the enterprise content management stuff was very deep. And I spent, a, myself and a number of people on the team spent a huge amount of time out on the road uh, at the end of the last release talking to customers across, across a wide range of verticals about what are their needs, what do they like, what do they hate. Uh, and what are the big new things that are entering their world? And we heard, you know, a few of these things like regulatory compliance, which, which isn't a surprise to anybody. We yep. all saw some of these big incidents go down. We saw new regulations get passed. Uh, but it was great to just talk to people in detail about what that meant, what that meant to them, and what are they going to do about it? Yeah. And how can I'm always. It, I used to be an MVP for five years, and I got to come up here and meet with various teams. And the office team always had a really interesting approach to meeting with customers and collecting interesting feedback in an interesting way. I, I thought, you know, tell me a little bit about going out on the road, because you just don't sure. go out on the road with a notepad, you know. You it's kind of like that. We use one now, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've actually pushed it further in this release than we have in previous. I would say that we spent more time on the road, and we also spent more time talking in detail about what we might do and talking early on to a sort of uh, as many people as we could manage the conversation with about, well, we're thinking of doing X. Would that help you or not? And getting um, really directed feedback early on in the process. And so uh, that's led up to things like our tech, some technical adoption program, which has been a huge success. We recently had a, had a big event where we got um, very focused feedback from a long number of people about this is how the release is shaping up, and this is what we think we're going to do, and uh, using that to try to fine tune what we deliver. Yeah. What are you proudest of in, in SharePoint or in what you're doing? <laughs> well, uh, it's actually a feature called content types, but it's not the kind of feature that any end user would get excited about. It's a very sort of abstract modeling thing, uh, which is, and it's a feature that I got to drive through its infancy, so it has a special place in my heart. Uh, it's the. Uh, at a high level, content types is just like we have different kinds of documents, meeting memos, engineering specs, legal contracts, and they all have different behaviors. And we need a good model to describe those different behaviors to the system and to mix them together in one place and to reuse it across multiple places. And so we built this framework called content types, which provides that capability. And the thing that's cool about it is that everything I just said, uh, no user ever has to care about. It's just they think. When I push the new button, there's a list of documents, but are the things that are relevant to me. And when I go fill out a form, I get the right set of properties that matter to an engineering spec versus what matters to a meeting memo. So we've really taken this very complex, abstract, you know, it's almost, it's like programming with classes and inheritance and scope and really gelled it down to how's that going to deliver a user experience that the information worker isn't going to have to spend a lot of time wrapping their brain around and they can still go 
add a new column to a library, yeah. it shows up on the documents, and when an author is off creating a new one of those, they see it right there in the form. It wasn't hard. That all worked seamlessly and then without a lot of user intervention. Right. You're so. dog pooting probably Office 12 yourself, yes. right? Yes. Yes. What, what do you find you like the best about Office 12? What do I like best? Well, I actually do like the new UI. I'm a huge fan of the organization. I now, isn't that going to freak people out? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could just I'm see sure a lot of don't. people going, oh my, I have to retrain. I had everything <laughs> figured out. Now they moved it all around on me. Uh, I'm kind of a gadget guy, so the idea of something new and exciting appeals to me as a user. Yeah. Um, it's a lot prettier to look at, and it does end up being more task-oriented. So when I'm in PowerPoint and I need to do something, I find that nine times out of ten, the thing that I need to do is right okay. up there based on the context I'm working in. Okay. Uh, there are also some features in Outlook that have been a huge win for me. There are little things like uh, it proposes meeting times when all the people are available, which is just makes my life so much easier. Yeah. It's like rather than scanning through looking for the open slot, it does that for me. It's a little thing, but helps a lot. Very much. I'm waiting for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big win. Other things uh, that, people, that you, you've noticed in Office 12? Uh, I like those two. Yeah, <laughs> Keep going. <that's>, <laughs> I'm getting sold. <laughs> uh, well, those are too big, I'll leave it with. Okay. <laughs> the, I'll ask everybody on the interview what enough. they think. Uh, uh, my, my personal favorite inside of SharePoint to date is actually, uh, and again, it's one of these little things that bothered me as a user. Uh, when you went to chain, to filter down the list of things that was visible, you had to go to this whole other page and customize a view and save stuff. And now, there's a drop down at the top. So if you're looking at a list sorted of tasks is sorted by assigned to and you want to filter it to one name, you just click on the top and boom, there you've got the filtered list. So that's actually, I think, a huge win for people trying to... Very much so. I use SharePoint to schedule on my Channel 9 videos. I'm looking forward to that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, cool. uh, a lot of the a lot of the features that we've done for ECM will resonate strongly. What's ECM? Enterprise Content Management. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. ECM. Like... ECM. <laughs> uh, will resonate very strongly with people who are doing things like document management today, and so they're trying to say, well, I need I have uh, not just a team site library, but I need a place where everybody in my division or everybody in my company can store all of their documents and have it be not the Wild West, but be sane. Cool. Different teams have different spaces. They can store their business relevant kinds of documents there. They can enforce a structured authoring process like check in and check out. And so a lot of that stuff will come across naturally to people who are familiar with document management. And the thing I would say, it's kind of like that, that story I pitched about workflow being useful for people and the tools that they're used to seeing it. Uh, it's all about making sure that the we meet all those considerations for IT, who says, I need to enforce checkout. People have to check out documents before they can write, but that it's really useful for end users and doesn't get in their way. If it doesn't help them get their jobs done, then they aren't going to use it. So we've tried hard to make sure it helps them. Very cool. We'll take okay. the spending half an hour uh, sure. talking to me about Thank you. SharePoint and Office 12. Oh, that was, was very useful. What yep. looking for. Thank you. Uh,